You guys know what this is, of course. It's the Humvee. And let's face it, it's grown a little long in the tooth. And it's about to be replaced by this. It's the JLTV. And this is built right here in Oshkosh, Wisconsin by Oshkosh Defense. And Oshkosh Defense was kind enough to let me get behind the wheel of the JLTV, but we also did one better. We got to go for a ride to this bad boy, the MATV. And coming up right now in the fast lane truck, we're gonna take all three of them for a ride and see the difference that, well, 30 years of technology development has made in the safety of our troops and of course in the capability of our trucks. First there was the Jeep, then came this, the Hun V, and on August 25th of 2015 the Oshkosh Corporation won the military contract to produce this, the JLTV, the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, the replacement for the Humvee. Recently I was lucky enough to be one of a handful of civilians to drive the new JLTV, but there was a catch. A lot of this truck's capabilities as well as the weapon systems employed are classified. So in order to produce this story, we agreed to let Oshkosh first edit this video before we put it together. So for instance, the interior of the JLTV is still highly classified, so all of our interior shots of me behind the wheel were edited out by Oshkosh, giving us only the audio portion of that video. So here, here's the, the iconic Humvee. Been out here uh, since I started coming in the Marine Corps in the early 80s. It's a great truck from what it was designed for. Uh, you know, designed for moving people, moving things as well. You know, the problem is once we got into the wars, you had to up-armor them. And once you up-armored them, you lost your payload, and you, off, you lost your off-road mobility. That was really the big problem with, with the Humvees. And that's the reason for the JLTV. So once you've lost your, your payload and your off-road mobility, you know, it moves people there, here and there, and not very efficiently. In order for Oshkosh to just show how much more capability the JLTV has, we're going to start in the old Humvee right now, go for a ride, and we're going to go in the MATV, which is currently deployed, and then of course end up in the JLTV. But I've got my man Don here. Yes. Giving me a ride. Don, how long have you been doing this? Going on 39 years. Don is an engineer who's been here for 39 years testing vehicles, so you've seen them all, man. It hurt me, man. I think I think I skinned my knee. I bumped my head, and I was sweating like a like a dog. Yeah, that was. Uh, you got a man up for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got a man if, up for if that. If one. That was your first ride, uh, man. Yeah. Now you can really start to appreciate just standing there watching the two trucks go by. All right, well let's try the MATV. Now we're gonna get in the MATV and see if my uh, uh, experience in off-roading in a much bigger truck. Now keep in mind. The JLTV and the Hummer are kind of like the light duty trucks of the military world. And this is more of a half ton truck, so it's a lot bigger. But it is a truck that Oshkosh currently builds and is deployed mainly in Afghanistan. So this is a truck that the troops are already in. This is an MATV. This is a standard MATV that we uh, produced uh, well over 8,000 of these for the U.S. military for use over in Afghanistan. It incorporates the standard TAC-4 suspension, independent suspension yeah. on this. About 16 inches of wheel travel on the MATV. You can notice the V-hull that's on there. So it's designed specifically for mitigation and uh, uh, taking that blast and spreading it out. And if you look at, at this vehicle as well, you can kind of tell that the wheels, the engine is forward, the rear end cargo is in the back. So your cargo, or your, I'm sorry, your capsule area is all in one spot. So that's designed also from a survivability perspective. So if you hit a mine, your engine or wheels can blow off, yet the capsule is still intact. First of all, I noticed we got air conditioning. Big difference. Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Front and rear, too. We got front and rear air conditioning. Wow. Just like a minivan. Yeah, yeah. Of course, minivan doesn't have a five-point harness. Well, it's got the car seats for the kids. It's got the car <laughs> seats for the kids, yeah. Oh yeah. You can already 
feel the difference. You can feel that suspension yeah. soak up the bumps. It's not hitting the jump stops, you know. That your back isn't the back isn't about to break. This would be so much fun to take on a trail. Oh yeah. But I'm suspecting it might be just a little too wide. Depending on the trail, yeah. Yeah. That's the big complaint, you know. But of course, high mountain passes. And of course, if you had a 50 caliber up here, it would dissuade a lot of uh, people from people tailgating can. you. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of your way. Yeah, it would, it would keep people out of your way pretty quickly. All right, let's try the JLTV. What, what really the JLTV program is all about is balancing what we call the Iron Triangle. It balances payload, protection, and performance. Again, with the upper armoring of the Humvee, you lost your payload because all your payload went into armor. You lost your performance because with all that armor, you had no ability to really go off-road real well anymore. And then, so you have payload performance and protection, which is really key, that off-road protection. Because this, even though you could up-armor the outside of it, you really couldn't get any underbody protection. So, Don, I, I can drive this? Yes, you can drive it. I can drive it. Oh my God, this is like... You know, I gotta say, this is like a bucket list moment. As long, long as Kent, Kent and, and uh, yeah, they, they said I was okay. Dave gave you a thumbs uh, up. Uh, all right, all right. This is the ultimate off-road vehicle that I've ever driven. Uh, let's get behind the wheel and see what it's like. Sounds good. All right. <laughs> I am so excited. This has got to be uh, one of the best days of my life to get behind the wheel of this bad boy. All right. Let's roll cameras. Let me see how this thing drives. What you're seeing right now is one of our JLTVs. Uh, what this is outfitted with is a combat bumper and a winch. So the suspension travel with the JLTV with the TAC-4i suspension is at full 20 inches of wheel travel on all four corners. So it gives you that tremendous off-road mobility, which you'll see here very, very shortly going across some of these moguls. Yeah, the engine is actually a Banks 866T uh, turbo diesel based on the GM Duramax 6600 engine. So basically what we do is uh, Banks Engineering, Gail Banks Engineering, takes a GM Duramax engine, they pull it and change it to the specifications needed for JLTV to be able to run like JP8 and other military grade fuels, and then tune it and tweak it to the horsepower required as well as the fuel economy for the military. So what that also does for us is by detuning it, you get better reliability, longer longevity of the engine. It also allows you for growth flexibility for the future. So with that horsepower being detuned a little bit to what our current missions are, should the payload have to increase, the weight gets heavier and need that more power, we could reflash the engine, give them more power and more capability in the same a package. A tunable truck. Exactly, a tunable truck. And you, it's from you, modern, auto, modern automotives. And do you... Uh disclose horsepower and torque? Um, not not torque, but on horsepower, we're tuned to around 340 horsepower right now. And uh, how about the weight of this thing? How much does it weigh? Well, from a curb weight yeah. perspective, before the B-Kit gets right. added or anything else, you're a little under 14,000 pounds. Once you add on B-Kit armor, full payload, etc., you're right around 22,000 pounds at a GVW. Yeah. Yep, and GVWR is around 24,000 pounds. I think, I think a troop will get in this right, and right away be able to take this off-road and not feel uncomfortable with it. You know, the, the only thing, there's only one little thing that, 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 that makes it a little harder to drive, that is kind of a lack of visibility. But that's of course because we're in a military vehicle. Yeah. So with, with the, the JLTV coming on board, you can see it's a little bit taller than a Humvee. The Humvee is designed to go in some of the lower holds of the ships. So it has to be a certain height to be able to get in those breakover angles to get there. With JLTV, even though it's a little bit taller, you've got an adjustable suspension on it. So what you can do is you can actually drop the vehicle down to the ground and get to the same height as a Humvee almost. So right now what this vehicle is at is a transport height. So we've taken the suspension, dropped it all the way down. This is where you'd have it for on a flatbed or on the onboard ship 
where you tie it down for transport. It's just going to go up the operational height next to the chain. You can see the rear end starting to lift first. The high pressure gas system is raising up the suspension. So the, the uh, system will automatically identify when it's level, when it's at the right height, and then it'll shut down the, the high idle and let it go to normal. That suspension will allow you to do that. It also allows you to level the vehicle off if you're on a side slope. So it can help for you know, opening up those armored doors, which get quite heavy. It also helps from a weapons employment perspective as well. The magic is that you don't have to know a lot to drive this, right? You don't, you don't, sometimes you go seriously off-roading, there's a level of expertise and there's a level of trail knowledge that you need. This doesn't care. It, it really doesn't care. Here comes a, here comes a big, big water crossing, it doesn't care. Two variants. One is the four-door variant and the other is the two-door variant. The two-door variant, a lot of people think of it as a pickup truck. So just two doors, large cargo area. It's designed for 5,100 pounds of payload. And then the four-door, um, which has a 3,500 pounds of payload, it comes in a couple of different mission packages. You can have a general purpose, similar to this one, which hauls people around and light equipment. You can have a heavy guns carrier, which where you can integrate a weapon system up on top of it, such as a, a 50 caliber or even a 30 millimeter weapon station. And then you've got the close combat weapons carrier, which is really the tow missile variant. So like, those are the four basic mission packages that are being delivered to the, uh, the Army and the Marine Corps right now. And if all goes well in December, how many are you going to build? Well, if all goes well by December of 2018, yeah. um, that is their anticipated full rate production decision. Their low rate production requirements is they can order roughly just under 5,000 trucks for that. And then once you get beyond that into full rate production, our current contract is right around a total of 17,000 vehicles. The overall requirement for the Army and the Marine Corps currently in total is around 55,000 vehicles. That's a lot of vehicles. It's a lot of trucks. We're looking forward to helping the uh, warfighter out with them. And by the way, if you're curious about the amount of protection the armor on the JLTV will provide for our troops, all Oshkosh was willing to say on the record was that it will defend against small arms fire. As an off-roader who's driven a lot of pickups and Jeeps, I'm amazed at the capability of this truck. It is by far the most capable truck I've ever ridden in, and it is by far the most capable truck I've ever driven. And what's amazing about it is you don't need a lot of talent. You just need to have a huge smile on your face. And you guys won the uh, competition against, you know, some very uh, competent companies, including General, right, which built that That's vehicle correct. over there. What makes this stand out? Why was this a better vehicle? Yeah, I mean, from an Oshkosh perspective, yeah. I mean, what we do is we make trucks, yeah. especially trucks. Four-wheel drive trucks. Four-wheel drive trucks, exactly. So we've got, you know, uh, best quality at a good price from a known manufacturer that has you know that quality. So it really that's what sets us, sets us apart across the board. You know, we make heavy vehicles, medium vehicles, and now light vehicles for both the Army and the Marine Corps. And in case you're wondering, the JLTV starts at just over a quarter million dollars in basic configuration, and no, it's not available for civilian purchase. I'm just wondering how long it will be before like these actually get into civilian hands. You know, at some point, this is going to filter down you know, to the civilian market. You know, that's one of the challenges with this vehicle. You know, the weight class, it's a much heavier vehicle than even a, stand, than a standard Humvee or, Humvee yeah, or 20, a Hummer. 20,000 pounds. But these are also fully integrated with armor on the base vehicle. Um, but right now, there's really no plans to civilianize this. There's also this. all kinds of communication and wiring for there military is, there is. Uh, defense systems. Yeah, so right. these are very complicated. While we brought in all the modern automotives that we can in the vehicle yeah. from the engine and Vitronics, this is also fully outfitted and built from the ground up with the planned needs for the military communication requirements. So within these vehicles on the production line, there's antenna cables running throughout, there's power cables running throughout, so that we can plug and play radios, basically, once they come off the production line. Oshkosh builds a lot of different military trucks. Think of the tank hauler as a heavy duty truck in the pickup world. And this MATV, that's sort of the half ton. But my favorite by far has got to be the JLTV. And we need a nickname for this. So if you guys have an idea for one, put it in the comments below and maybe it'll stick because this is now going to be the replacement for this. And I got to tell you, the difference between this truck and this truck is more than night and day. As always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Truck. Check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, real world reviews. See you guys next time. We haven't given it a nickname. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the JLTV, the Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, from an Oshkosh development perspective, it's yeah. the LATV, the Light Combat Tactical All-Terrain Vehicle. 
which is the JLTV solution. Um, we haven't come up with a cool name like, you know, like wow. some of the other companies have done. Yeah. Uh, so we don't have that. I, I think the military should come in with some kind of naming uh, convention, sure. you know, some competition. Yeah. That'd be kind of cool. But we, we haven't done that, nor has anybody else yet. Yeah.